Intro to imaginary numbers. Now, imaginary numbers, contrary to their name, actually do exist, but it's sort of a weird concept that we're going to be getting into. So to start that out, let's do a little bit of a review on radicals. So say I say something like square root of 8, and I say simplify that. Your logic is like, okay, what goes into 8? We have square root of 4 times 2. Square root of 4 is a perfect square, so we can take that out, giving us 2 root 2. Where imaginary numbers come in is when we are taking the square root of a negative number. Okay? And up until now, what we've said is you can't take the square root of a negative number, which was sort of a lie. I apologize. But in order to do it, we have to use this imaginary numbers. Okay? So let's take a look at the square root of negative 9. Okay. We've been saying this isn't real, which is true. Okay? But just like we did up here, we can split this up into a real component, which is the 9 part we know, and the negative 1 part, which is the part that th sort of throws us off. Okay? So what we're going to say is this is the same thing as the square root of 9 times negative 1. We can split up square roots. I didn't write it in up here, but you know how to do it. So this is then the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. Square root of 9 is 3. So what we're really left with here is 3 times the square root of negative 1. This is where imaginary numbers come into play. And square root of negative 1 is really the basis of all imaginary numbers we deal with. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a definition. Okay? What we do is we call the square root of negative 1 the letter i, lowercase cursive i. So going back to the problem we have over here, we can replace that in and this ends up being 3i, i standing for the imaginary number square root of negative 1. Okay. In addition, there's one other part of the definition of i, okay? and that is i squared. Okay. And by definition, i squared is just equal to negative 1. Okay. Mathematically, it's pretty hard to prove, so we're going to leave that aside. But this is the two main things that we need to remember moving forward with imaginary numbers.